6am West London. A police helicopter, call sign India 99, has a date with a dog a thousand feet below. Yes, yeah, India 99, we've got the dog searching now. A thief has run from a stolen car and a police dog called Brody is trying to find him. Oh, Star Hotel units, India 99, we're just coming up overhead. But he needs the help of the Sky Cops. Yeah, units, we've got you in the uh, back garden areas, got your visual. Uh, we'll search that area. It's still pitch black on the ground, and Brody has so far been unable to pick up a scent. We'll just start sniffing for it now, I think. India 99's heat seeking thermal image camera and Brody's nose should make the difference. Tonight, as the Sky Cops go to the dogs. He's barking. Good. And the dogs come to them. London's criminals discover hiding places are tough to find. Oh, yay! The dog will claim that. Yeah. Indian 99's crew find they haven't the nose for the job. Ow. And a desperate search for one 81 year old man and his dog. Someone who's 80, when it gets cold, it gets very cold. Hey, you're covered in mud, he's falling over. And hypothermia is, is a killer. The search for the escaped car thief is continuing. Neither the highly trained police dog nor the five million pound helicopter can find a trace in the gardens where the man is thought to be hiding. Right, dog handlers just below my crosshairs. Yeah, I got, and he I got needs him. to go. But that's because they've been looking in the wrong place. That will do for me then, buddy. In there. Oh, well done. <laughs> we had a, a nice hot heat source. And when we zoomed in on these cameras, we could tell quite easily that it was, uh, it was our man lying very, very flat on this roof, trying to keep out of, out of sight of anyone in the gardens. Dog out there receiving India 99. We believe we've got your suspect on a single story flat roof. Police dogs, their handlers, and the Sky Cops are fast becoming one of London's most successful thief catching teams. We can clear open back gardens very, very quickly, especially at night time. We can clear an entire garden block between us, so we work well on those occasions. Success often depends on careful choreography. You put your right hand out, that's yeah. it, where your hand is pointing, that line of houses, and then as you look at those houses, about five houses to the left. But how to get him off the roof? The Sky Cops need to keep him in vision, but the tall houses are a bit of a problem for the pilot, Captain Sweeting. Louis, do you want me to get you this side so you can... If, if it's... Yeah, if you yeah. can. At least you'll keep sight of him then if he does do a runner. Whatever's good for you, Captain. Oh, no, whatever's best for you, mate. And what's happening now? It looks like there are two on the roof. He moves slightly and you can see where he has been lying as, as he rolls over. It almost looks like there's two people there. So he's obviously been there for quite a long time because he's heated up the roof. But definitely a scar and a rollover, not too scary. Yeah, definitely a scar and a rollover. It's now Brody and his handler's turn to move in. In this particular case, Brody didn't bark at the suspect. He was some way up above her on, on the flat roof. And I, I simply called on him to show himself and come down to us. But the thief won't budge. And now there's only one thing for it. Brody's handler is going to have to get his hands dirty. Single story block. Uh, Foster Hotel, you got one officer on a, um, a single story block. Uh, just pick arms out to your side, yeah. He's uh, just up there where you'd be pointing a torch. Just up over the ledge. Most criminals come quietly when police dogs are about. Suspect's now up on his feet, speaking to one of the officers, making his way down the slope roof. Stand by one. As he started to climb down, I made it clear to him that if he attempted to run away or if he, if he showed any aggression to me or Brodie, that she would be sent to bite him. But if he did as, uh, as I told him, then he'd be perfectly safe. And our suspect's down off the second story roof. I think he's probably, probably heard the dog and, uh, yeah, it certainly didn't jump straight down. Hey, look, he's called his dog in. Six to eight. Oh, 
Alright, dog dog <laughs> and I gave him. <laughs> Alright. He was very compliant and uh, agreed to do what I asked him to. The fear of being bitten by Brody was greater to him than the fear of being uh, arrested. Indian 99, Quebec 0, thanks for that. Yeah, so we'll just stay on you until you've got contact with the Foxtrot Hotel officers. I believe they're in the garden next year. Being able to talk directly to Brody's handler is a big plus for the Sky Cops, especially when it means you can find out more about your fugitives. Your man's uh, one-hour recall, Brisbane tells me. Oh, superb. Yeah, nice one. Cool. Good flight. I think our job here is done. Uh, we're going to return to base. Let's go with safe India 99. India 99 now. London Skycops are based at an old army camp on the edge of Epping Forest. Yeah, down at 12 minutes past, though. 12 minutes past. As the night shift clocks off and a new day dawns, a group of police dog handlers arrive. So, Skycop PC Agnew is about to start her latest dog training class. She is going to teach them to fly. Today we're going to be doing specialist firearms dog training. Dogs that deal with firearms recovery. We're going to bring them in today and we're going to put them into the aircraft and see how they react. This is police dog Zeus 10. Um, his pet name is Trigger. Best looking dog in the Met Police, I reckon. Flying London's gun dogs to crime scenes is a new thing for both the dogs and the Sky Cops. If they are required, they're required in a hurry. And that's where we come in. We collect them from wherever they are. We can deposit them at any place that they're needed and time is saved. These dogs are used to facing dangerous gunmen, but flying in a helicopter is a different kettle of fish altogether and no one's quite sure how they're going to react. OK, right, this is where the fun starts. First pair, thumbs up and in we come. So, it's the silent approach. No engines. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Clip the dog on first. Some are better at it than others. Well, the worst case scenario is him deciding he doesn't like it and trying to jump out, which is obviously something we don't want him to do. Um, so it's just a matter of doing it repeatedly to condition the dog to get used to the in and out of the helicopter. Zeus 10 Straight might be getting out. used to the in and out bit. And open the door. But shaking it all about with another dog as well is asking for trouble. There's no rush. Yes. Ooh, Take your time. To the crowd. Oh, he's not happy. The problem that we have is because it's such a confined space, we don't know how the dogs are going to react. And it's whether or not the two dogs, when they come face to face in that confined space, will tolerate one another. They do. Oh. <laughs> That's all there is. That's the easy part. What happens when it's the real thing and the engines are running? Right, who's going in first? You're first. The Skycops know that this is crunch time. If there's going to be a problem of any kind, it'll be now. The dogs are totally under control. The environment that we're in here is totally controlled, so if we do have a problem, we can back off. Next up is Trigger, the two-year-old German Shepherd. His trainer is confident. I don't think the noise is going to worry him unduly. I think, because we've practised a couple of times now, he should be able to go in quite easily. Noise doesn't normally affect the dogs, so we'll just see what happens. But Trigger's flight partner looks nervous. She's a Malinois called Lexi, with a thing about flying. They get very excited when they hear the engine start. They get very excited about the whole thing. And Lexi is expressing her excitement in more ways than one. Ow. We did have one that got a little bit, um, put it down to stress. <laughs> Well, the handler said it was the dog, so we've got to go with that. Trigger, meanwhile, is taking it all in his handler's stride. The 
The Sky Cops are not impressed, but must carry on regardless. The moment they're in and they settle down and the aircraft takes off, they just look out the window and just relax. Nine times out of ten, they just lay down and go to sleep. Don't seem bothered at all, these two, do they? No, not at all. Lexi's earned her wings, but the Sky Cops are more than happy to see the back of her. It's got to leave the door open for a minute. Each pair of dogs must be flown for five minutes, and the Met has 40 of these specially trained firearms dogs. For the rest of the firearms pack, it's turning out to be a good day. Now they know they can do it for real. Fine, no problem at all. Very relaxed. Enjoyed it as much as I did. It's just like getting in and out of a van, really, isn't it? It's just, it uh, doesn't phase them. It's just something that they're used to. That's what we want. Lexi is back where she's happiest, but none the worse for wear. Come on, then, you. Talk me through it. What happened? She decided to express her own plans. In the oh! <laughs> yeah, whatever you leave in there, you take home with you. Talk about this. <laughs> Through, through nerves, she expressed her anal glands. It's, it's, a, it's a fear thing. And um, so she's left a rather delightful smell within the plane. So, haven't you go? Yeah. The fear of what to expect has gone. Next time, it's one less pressure off them. So instead of worrying about the flight, the handler can concentrate on the job that he's got to go to. Job done. But the dog squad have made their presence felt. It's fur. Um, slobber. All part of the service, apparently. It's so one of those risks, I suppose. <laughs> it was a bit whiffy on the first flight, but there we go. Ah, it's marvellous. Thank you very much. That's all right. These are the things you have to expect. It's an animal, for goodness sake. Things do happen and they, they can be smelly at times. <laughs> marvellous. Thank you, gentlemen. But there's no peace for the wicked, and London's criminals are at it again. 5074. I've got a job for you, Romeo Yankees Ground, page 166. If you can. A teenager is on the run in South East London after breaking his bail conditions. PC Pritchard is now the duty sky cop. Yeah, yeah we'll go there. Nice to get moving again. Thank you. Thank you. 200. The dog squad have also been asked to help, and time is of the essence. The sky cops would like to get there first. Yeah, he's described as an icy one male. Short dark hair, wearing a black t-shirt with a coloured motif on it, and dark jeans. Ground cops who have chased the bail jumper believe he's hiding in these back gardens. 65's received that the gardens to the western side you want searching. Yes, yes, to the rear and to the side, although we've had information it's gone over the back. Even though it's broad daylight, the crew of 99 will use the chopper's thermal imaging camera to search for hotspots. That's the same we'll start a search. Yeah, at that point. It's not only human beings who produce thermal images, compost heaps and barbecues do too. Oh, what's that? And that. The crew have got something hot, and it could be their suspect even though it's completely hidden by the fence. This particular thermal mark came out really easy. As soon as we came over the top, it was one of the first things we saw, and it was very intense. It doesn't look like a person, but there's something behind that fence. When somebody hides, your body's generating heat. If you're in contact with another object, that heat is transferred. It's like sitting on a chair, you tend to warm that chair up. With no other hotspots in the vicinity, PC Tartaglia is sure the heat source he's spotted is the most likely place. And the first dog's now on the scene with a bit of encouragement from Tartaglia, who used to be a dog handler. They're part of the team, and you're just going, get in there, go on, dog, find it's to your left. You, just, you do, you try and talk them in a little bit. Down the screen, down the screen. Yeah. So we just had a heat source behind that shed. Uh, we're going to ask you to check whether your dog's in there. The dog has his man. Yeah, we're on the time, on the time, on the time. But this bail jumper's not afraid of police dogs. He doesn't realise their bite is worse than their bark. He did put up a little bit of resistance when the dog found him, and as a result of that, was restrained by the two dog handlers. 
I think the dog helped a little bit as well, and he was put in cuffs. But the dogs are uh, are invaluable, and we always try and work in tandem with them because if they don't get them, we do, and if we don't, they normally do. So. Good work, all units. Good work, Back at base, a second helicopter is being got ready in case it's needed. And a fuel check is done by the engineer. You're checking for sediment. You're checking for visible water. I don't know if there's any water there. The little yellow capsule turned blue. That's a good sample. I'll now date that. It's identified to the particular aircraft. And if anything should happen, God forbid, actually the investigation branch can come back, check this sample of the day and say, well, the fuel was good, so we can pretty much discount that the fuel was the cause of any incident. Captain Sutton is now the duty pilot. The aircraft's just come back from engineering. It's been uh, inspected, and I'm just preparing for the first flight and making sure the aircraft's fully prepared for service, which it is. So We're going to go airborne. Play switch is on. The controls are unlocked, landing lights on. Secure, clear to right, rail ready to go. Nothing Where are we going, going by the way? Uh, we're going towards Heathrow. Do a security check there first. Captain Sutton is unique. The only Met helicopter pilot to have also flown commercial jets out of London Heathrow. Well, we've got a very good working relationship with uh, air traffic control. We have a job to do, they have a job to do. We have to maintain a good awareness of our surroundings. Can you nine nine ahead? Just to let you know, we're on your uh, frequency uh, currently security checks uh, north side. Today, the sky cops are looking for terrorist threats. In the lay-by, left-hand side, vehicle with a uh, break in the roof. Down a bit of fire just there. Is that a fast food? The mobile. Mobile catering, yeah, fine. They also have time for a bit of plane spotting. There is, yeah. I think I'll be Oh, yes. It never felt so amazing flying over Heathrow. How lucky we are. I'm uh, a bit of an aircraft enthusiast. It's quite interesting watching the landings. Look at that touchdown. Incredible, isn't it? But Pilot Sutton believes the jet hasn't been landed by human hand. Well, that was an auto land. It's touched down on the spot. Okay, uh, AT3 tower, continue approach runway 27 right, wind is 230 degrees. There's trouble on the ground. A stolen car being pursued by traffic police. Yeah, 30 miles an hour over speed bumps. Going right, right, right to Holborn Road. With any luck, they can get involved, but they must be quick. He's got a stay cam. Oh. They might have missed the chase, but maybe they can help catch the thief who's run into some gardens. There we go, you've got to put your the camera now. Yeah. There's one person there. Yeah. Leave it on, we're on scene. Can we get a description of the one outstanding, please? So uh, we're searching the gardens now. The five of us, RC1 male, 16 to 18 years, with a hoodie top on, which uh, strikes down both slaves. Yeah, from my mind, that's all I see. The description is good but the Sky Cops know they are best looking for hot spots first. That's how Paul in had the I like them. Once again, Indian 99's crew aren't going to go for the first thing they see. They need to take a wider view. What we'll often do is search the whole block identify all the hotspots and then we'll get them checked out in order of the likelihood of them being the suspect. It's important not to be drawn into that one hotspot because that could be anything to be honest and you could be hiding somewhere else. Getting them checked out usually means sending in the dogs again. Oh, someone in there. I think, uh, oh yeah, that's good. That's good a lot, yeah. a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all you need stand by. Yeah. But that may not be necessary. This could be their man. Further down the block, I found a nice heat source glowing under some bushes, quite near where the pieces had last seen this guy. So I thought, well, we'll get this check first. This is our most likely target. The dogs are already in with a handler and ground cops. 
He's probably uh, 15 or 20 feet away from you, close to the uh, to the trunk of the tree. Could be underneath something. Trunk to the far end. He's right on it now. It's almost right in the centre of uh, that, that yeah. tree. He's walked over that. It'd be right next to it, yeah. 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 This is now a real mystery. We've definitely got a heat source in there. It looks as if officers are walking straight past it. Yeah, India 99. Is the heat source standing right beside me now? He's sort of pointing towards where it was. It's yeah, left of me. Where, yeah, where he's pointing. Yes, yeah. yes, where you were pointing. Yeah, it's exactly where we had it. Which is soon solved. One large crop must be further. Uh, uh, but thank you for checking. Uh, we continue sorry. searching. Unfortunately, when they lifted it up, it was some timber or whatever that was uh, giving the thermal return, so we disregarded that. And then Steve want, wanted to go back to the, the original heat source he'd seen. 251, where was that bloody tarpaulin? Yeah, I thought it was here. I thought it was here. There it is. Yes, there it is. is. That's certainly worth checking out, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, thank you. Yeah, dog bad for the new 99. It's got another heat source. Um, it looks as if it's uh, a barbecue cover, but obviously nobody would have had a barbecue today. We get quite a good heat return. Number 72. This time, the dog will get the first look. Yeah, the cars are pulling yeah. up to the front of it. Yeah, oh, there we go, yeah. Of, uh, officers running up to the front of it. Um, if you can get to the back of the premises, it's a black tarpaulin cover. It's there. Oh, the dog's just going up to it now. Straight into it. Yeah. Please be. He's barking. That's good. Oh, let's get that out. Oh, yes! Is it? Not yet. The dog's pulling at it. You choose that's affirmative. Oh, yay! Good job. See, that was the first thing we saw, Steve, as well. Oh, nice one. The dog will claim that. Yeah, we will, yeah. He was well hidden from the human eye. They would never have seen him. But the heat quickly goes through tarpaulins or fences. There will be a goal from India 99, uh, that's uh, another one in custody. One nil to the police. It's, it's always good to get a good result. Again, yeah, well done the ground here, it's well done the dog. Uh, 99 out. Once we're overhead, they're not going to get away. It is time though for the Sky Cops to get away. They need more fuel. But even with their feet on the ground, they're still on a high. Gives you a buzz. I think, as most people would normally say, it's just my day job. But uh, yeah, it's satisfying to get, get a good result. The good result must soon be forgotten. News is coming in that an 81-year-old man has gone missing. PC Tartaglia's thermal imaging skills are needed again. The Sky Cops are called to look for missing persons, or MISPers as the police call them, several times a day. It's either young children or very elderly people. But without any kind of intelligence to suggest where they might be, it's, it's really a needle in a haystack often. Indian 99's crew like looking for needles in haystacks, particularly when they're mispers. But this is no ordinary mission. The light is going fast and the temperature dropping like a stone. When there's weather conditions as well come into play, like cold weather and things like that, it's obviously the all the time left while they're out is sort of crucial. The good news is that the missing man has used his mobile phone to say he's in Parkland near his home, but he doesn't know exactly where. Anyway, to you, um, just arriving on scene where you're uh, Miss Per. Have you got any more intelligence coming? Yeah, I'm at scene. I've just uh, been on the phone again to the Miss He can't hear a word I'm saying. He just keeps repeating. He's in the field. So that's all we know. That's super. We'll have a good old look for you now. The Sky Cops need to identify the searchers below quickly. Andy, can you just put your blue light on initially, just so India 99 can see where he would have last been? I've got visual on one uh, with blue lights off. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, uh, we'll start there and work our way up. The 81-year-old and his dog, called Charlie, have been missing for nearly two hours. To take his dog for a walk and the change of time of daylight had, had, had thrown him off. And before he'd realised it, it had got dark. And someone who's 80, when it gets cold, it gets very cold. And hypothermia is, is a killer. This park is vast, with more than 2,000 acres of fields and streams. He was well away from the beaten track. He was out and in the dark, and he didn't know where he was going, what direction he was heading in.
you work out how quickly we can search a great big open area in a matter of minutes, or you put 20 or 30 officers on the ground and have them fingertip search or walk through search that same area, you've got a much better chance of saving life because we're faster and we're more effective. To be effective tonight, PC Tartaglia is going to have to work wonders with his thermal imager. So from 9 we've got a uh, visual with a male with a dog uh, in the fields. Stand by, we'll give you an exact location. Hey, you know, no, it's all received. Just waiting up there, thank you. Fortunately, because it was so cold out there and he was still warm, he stood out really well and the, the camera did it, did us proud. Finding the 81-year-old is one thing. Getting cops on the ground to him is quite another. It's now pitch black and this is farmland, full of pitfalls and other dangers. PC Tartaglia has the answer. India 99's night sun. Work. What we'll do is we'll light him up and um, hopefully that'll give you a way, a way to get to him. 30 million candles worth of searchlight. Because it was pretty featureless, it was just open in fields. What we did was decide to turn the night sun on and just light up um, the chap on the ground and sh just tell the, the ground units to follow to the base of the beam. Save them, um, we can see your light. Um, just got to make our way across fences, etc. Can you find an easier way for us to get over these uh, bushes? Yeah, we're just seeing if we can spot a path a bit further up. Keep going the way you're going, he's, um, he's wandering around in circles, bless him. Everyone knows they need to get to the old man fast, before he becomes too cold. X-ray from two, um, we can hear his mobile ringing in the field, the other side of the bushes. Could you like the mist breath again for me? I can hear a dog barking, but I can't see him. Yep, we'll do it. We'll just come back to the side of the hedge and we'll stick the nice up back off that one. You're really close to him. Yeah, we've got him now, thank you. Are you happy with direction on the way back? He's quite elderly. He's lost one of his shoes. Uh, he's covered in mud. He's fallen over. He's definitely not going to be able to get through it, I don't think. That's understood. Give us a minute. We'll, uh, we'll try and sort out another way in. Do you want to tell the wife he's safe and well? Yeah, we see Andy's coming to collect her now. Um, we've got a change of clothing for the male if he needs to go top stuff. The officers on the ground aren't out of the woods yet. At least one of them has received a nasty shock. If there is other people in the field, be careful of the electric fences. It hurts. It's just nice to know that you make a difference, not always just catching suspects, but he might be a granddad, so that granddaughter or grandson's got granddad for a little bit longer. Yeah, we're out of the woods now. Um, thank you very much for your assistance. Well, uh, pass on our best hope is OK. We got the chap and um, got him home, which was the main thing. And if we hadn't have seen him, there's the very real possibility that he wouldn't have been alive in the morning. The 81-year-old and his dog were none the worse for their ordeal. The man found hiding under a tarpaulin by India 99 and a police dog was charged with various motoring offences and was sent to jail for 12 weeks. The runaway driver, who hid on the roof before being arrested by a dog handler, was jailed for a day and banned from driving for two months. And the youth who breached his bail conditions and hid behind a shed before being caught on camera and subdued by dog handlers was again released on bail.